name is Mark Fisher, and I am the uh, a committer on Spring Framework, the lead of the Spring Integration and Spring AMQP projects, most recently focusing on the Spring Developers Experience on the Cloud Foundry platform. And joining me today for this webinar is Ramnivas Ladad. So can you please introduce yourself, Ramnivas? So uh, I'm Ramnivas Ladad. Uh, I'm a committer to Spring Framework and also to Cloud Foundry. And in Cloud Foundry, I focus on uh, developer experience. So I'm leading a team uh, whose job is to make sure developer experience is as, as best as it can be. Um, and today we'll be talking about uh, how to get Spring applications running in cloud. What we'll do is we will uh, go through a few slides and then do a few demos and then jump back to slide to show you what we did. So this Topic is zero to cloud in 60 minutes. In fact, we are going to do uh, multiple times zero to zero to cloud. Uh, we'll start from, uh, from scratch applications, create those, and deploy to cloud, and show you various cloud features along the way. Let's talk about application evolution. So if you want to, let's say, write an application, it usually starts with a great idea. So we you have some idea maybe some social networking site or something and you want to build it uh, typically start as a prototype to see if your ideas can work and probably refactor it to make it uh, more decent usually you will write using either spring rails sinatra with some scripting along the way and idea is you want to be able to scale uh, learn by doing and you may want to experiment with various approaches. So for example, you may not have decided what kind of data store you want. You may have to, you may start with relational, but then realize that for scaling purpose, you may want to use a CV store. And the idea is you don't know really how successful you are going to be. So you want to basically have a way to scale on demand. And you also want to not worry about self-healing, so application should just uh, keep going without you being babysitting it all, all the way. And the idea is uh, you want to work on, focus on your application. You are not interested in having to worry with uh, writing tickets to talk to your administration guys who deploy the application. So your real focus should be application. That's your currency. That's where you make it. And you want to have friction-free development. So you want to be able to focus on your application and deploy it, and the deployment process should be as easy as possible. You also want to monitor and manage boundaries of your code and no further. So you shouldn't be concerned with operating system level patches, make sure that security is, uh, is correctly implemented at OS level. Again, just your application is all that matters to you. And you also want to develop and test at low, low cost. So if, if you really take a step back and we look at cloud, why cloud? There are two things. One, you want to have low initial investment. Essentially, you want to pay, uh, pay as you go approach. And second, you want to have on-demand scalability. As you have more, as your application is successful, you should be able to simply scale it up to meet those demands. So if you look at the low cost approach, there are two things. One, of course, is just dollars and cents, or euros and cents, I should say. And then there is um, what it takes for you to take your idea into cloud. There should be no friction. You shouldn't have to worry about all the extra details that you normally are subjected to. So that's also low cost uh, effect there. Then when your application is really successful, you should want to push it into a high SLA cloud. You also want to uh, deploy your application into cloud, more applications as you need. And you don't want to, as you move from one cloud to another cloud, you don't want to learn a new model. So if you're, let's say, deploying into your data center versus deploying to Cloud Foundry, it should be exactly the same experience. 
So here is a typical uh, Spring application, web application. So you have a bunch of application yeah. instances, and it probably connects to some database, maybe relational, and you have a system load balancer, a router at front. So load balancer's job is to make sure that your app request, client requests, go to uh, all these application instances in a reasonably fair manner. If you want to deploy application today without a, a sort of old-fashioned way, you really have to work a lot. So you first develop your application, which is you are more than happy to do it because that's for developers, so you are interested in developing applications. You, you are interested in ex, uh, exploring your uh, technology. But you probably are not interested in configuring your MySQL. You have to make sure the, uh, the sizes are correct and the thread size stack is correctly set and all those things. You're also not interested in uh, worrying about a reverse proxy, maybe Nginx, uh, or mod modifying your Tomcat to say number of connection pool is the right and other configuration. You are not interested in that. That's not what you make money out of. So in Cloud Foundry, we basically make experience as easy as this. You target your, uh, to your cloud, you log in, and you push your application. So instead of talking through this slide, uh, Mark, why don't we show them? Okay. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to walk through the first of our examples here uh, of building an application starting completely from scratch and deploying to the cloud. Um, we're going to start with a Spring Source tool suite template project. Uh, the main idea here is that we're not doing anything differently when we build our applications in order to deploy it into Cloud Foundry. So I'm following the same steps you would normally follow when you create a new project. If I go to the Spring template project wizard and choose Spring MVC project, I'm basically going to create a simple Hello World application that I would be able to take further uh, to develop into an application for my particular business domain. Right now, we just want to get a Hello World application running on the cloud as soon as possible. So I'm going to call this app Webinar Hello and give it a um, package name for the top level. So we'll say Org Cloud Foundry Webinar. Nothing different than any other uh, creation of an STS template project at this point. <clears throat> so what I want to do is deploy this to Cloud Foundry. You'll notice right now I'm, I'm just dealing with the standard STS setup where I have a TC server uh, instance defined in my server's view. What I want to do is add a Cloud Foundry instance. And you can install the plugin. I've already done it. But when you go to the extensions view of the dashboard within STS, You'll see an option there for the Cloud Foundry plugin. You select that option and just hit install, and it will be added for you. I'll come back to that in just a moment. For now, what I want to do is create a new server instance, choose Cloud Foundry. Since I already have the plugin installed, it shows up there under VMware. Next, and now I need to type in my credentials, my email address, and my password. In order to make sure that I've actually typed the right information, I'm going to validate the account. First, I need to choose a URL. And here's where yeah, you see, go ahead, round of us. I mean, this is where, uh, when we talked about earlier, multiple clouds, this is where you get a choice of, you know, like for example, this local cloud is something that you can deploy on your laptop. Uh, let, let me just make a one point. Cloud Foundry is open source, so you can download sources from GitHub and we will share the link towards the end and you can create your own cloud on your laptop and if you want then to take the same code and put it in your data center that's fine or you can deploy to uh, our hosted cloud and this is where you don't have to relearn your model you simply choose the different target URL and you're good to go go ahead Mark sure so in this case I'm choosing VMware Cloud Foundry uh, which is actually a public cloud offered by VMware. Uh, you can sign up for an account if you go to cloudfoundry.com if you haven't already. Uh, I choose that account. I validate my account. Looks like I typed my password correctly. 
Next, and I'm going to just go ahead and finish here so I can show you dragging and dropping. I could also move the application over at that stage. But what I want to do, oh, and here's my um, extensions, just so you can see. It, within the extensions view, you would see the Cloud Foundry um, plugin if it weren't already installed. Okay, so I'm dragging Webinar Hello onto the Cloud Foundry instance. And I'll bring up the view. You can see there's the overview, but also the Applications tab. Now I have my Webinar Hello application showing up here. I can start it. And at this point, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to stick with the project name, the URL. Um, I can choose the memory allocation that I need for this application. And then it will deploy. And Ron of us, maybe you can give a little bit of insight into what's happening here. Right. So what's going on now is we are taking the bits, the WAR file, essentially, and pushing it to cloud. So And it is pretty smart in terms of what we end up uploading. So we do an incremental update. So if the are already there on cloud, we won't push it, back, push it again. Then application is pushed up on the, other, uh, on the cloud side. We reassemble the WAR file, put it in Tomcat, start it, and hook that Tomcat to router. We'll talk about the precise detail a bit later, but right now, essentially, uh, the application is hooked up to webinar hello.cloudfoundry.com. So when you hit that URL. So you can see here that this is actually hosted on cloudfoundry.com. It's the same Hello World application that I could have dragged and dropped onto this local TC server instance. It would be exactly the same thing. And now what I want to do is show you um, kind of taking things one step further and actually accessing information in the cloud environment itself. Um, I've, I've gone ahead and created another application, which is actually started from the same template, and I made three small changes. First, in my POM, I added the Cloud Foundry runtime project as a dependency. And what this gives me is an API layer for interacting with the environment on the cloud. Uh, we're going to see much more about it later, but for right now, the, m the main thing is to see this in my home controller. Instead of just printing out Hello World on the on, uh, forwarding directly to the JSP, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new cloud environment instance. And then I'm adding to my Spring MVC model the host and the port, which I retrieve from the instance info, instance info which is the information about my particular application running in Cloud Foundry. The host and the port are going to be dynamically allocated in terms of the IP address and where it's running. Um, Ron of us will go through some of the details on that later when we look at the architecture. But the, the main idea is that you don't know all of that information until it's deployed, but you can retrieve it from the environment. And later we'll talk about dependency injection in that role as well. Now, down here under the views, you can see all I had to do to change my uh, JSP. Instead of printing out Hello World, I'm now printing out Hello from host and port. If I go back to my um, servers view and drag and drop this application and start it, choose my memory allocation and begin the application. Once this is running, we'll be able to see the host and the port printed out uh, instead of Hello World. Notice here, okay. by the way, uh, that the log out that you see is the log output uh, when you get when you start Tomcat. So essentially, we do not want to change experience. So this is no different than if you were to deploy to local Tomcat or TC server. The same experience. And now what I want to show is um, if we, w one of the reasons that we might want to be deploying this application in the cloud is to have scalability. And here within the STS uh, plugin, we can actually change the number of instances for this particular application. So what I just did now through the, the STS plugin is bump up my instance count to two. Instead of a single instance, I now have two. If I go back here and refresh this page, you'll see that I actually end up with different information every once in a while. Right now, the URL is 109. 